so welcome to the seminar today. Our speaker today is our own Suresh Govindarajan, and he is going to update us about uh, Lee algebras, about Moonshine, about what he's doing with Moonshine. And uh, he has found out new Lee algebras, and he's going to update us about them. Over to you, Suresh. Uh, thank you, Ayan. And uh, so first, I should say that I'm yet to discover the new Lee algebra. We are searching for it because the other ones are the ones which we have found are already you know, okay, so, but these are how Lee algebras emerge from uh, Amrel Moonshine. And this is based on some work I've done with Shabir and Vishwanath and this appeared in this paper, but we've been working very hard with uh, limited success, but I'll, I'll just give you a status report. And uh, if you've listened to my ISM talk in December, this will be more or less similar to that with some small modifications. Okay, so the plan of the talk is the following. I'll begin with sort of an introduction, which will be like giving you a bird's eye view of the thing. So that I'll just give you placeholders and hopefully I will explain uh, some of the things uh, in there. Okay, so that is a rough thing. But uh, the second one is a practical introduction to BKM Lee super algebra. This will be fun because uh, most of us, uh, I mean, uh, are not familiar with it, but it's not so far away from our understanding. So I'll just explain that. And then I'll get on to our work. Uh, our work is to embed an affine SL2 into a class of Lie algebras or potential Lie algebras. And, uh, and then from that, we extract some vector valued modular forms and we characterize them completely. And then the, the next step is to go beyond these uh, vector valued modular forms and ask if we can completely characterize the Lie algebra from some objects that we will start working with. I'll explain what those are and then, then I'll continue. Okay, so, so, uh, so, uh, so the goal which has not been achieved is search for a new kind of Lie algebra, and so uh, it's kind of this kind of a map, uh, which uh, which is again not the way we, we physicists think about uh, Lie algebras. You start with the Cartan matrix, and uh, from that you can uh, you get something which I will write as some G of A, which is a Cartan modal Lie algebra. I'll explain how this uh, route goes. And then there is a extension of this due to Borchards, and that will give you another kind of Lie algebra, uh, which is called the BKM Lie algebra, okay? So from A to G of A is fairly generic, but it's not necessarily guaranteed that uh, there exists uh, Borchard extensions for uh, given a Cuxmodal Lie algebra, number one. It's not also obvious that uh, uh, it's not. It's not even unique. There can be more than one uh, Borchardt's uh, algebras which can arise from the Cartesian algebra. Okay, so it's not even unique. Okay, so but uh, what what I'm interested in is something which goes beyond this. So I've given an arrow. Maybe there's a Borchardt's algebra, and from there we go there, or maybe directly from this to this. Okay, so that so this is roughly the the route that one is trying to get at, and we're trying to understand. And so I'll explain all these terms as we go. So this talk is actually uh, one more point which I wanted to make about uh, 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 about uh, Borchardt's Lie algebras is that they you never have infinite series of them you just have finite numbers usually so it's like uh, in the usual uh, classification of semi simple Lie algebras you know we have the, we have the infinite series but then we have things like G two E six E seven E eight so they are all special so every Borchardt's algebra which became Lie super algebra or Lie algebra is special, okay, it's not. Okay. So, so what we are going to do here, we are going to focus on a family of five Siegel modular forms. Okay, so Delta is just a symbol for the Siegel modular form. And N, the, I'll explain later what N is, but of weight K. And there are five of them and are, there's an N, uh, there's a positive integer N associated with that. That's one, two, three, four, and six. There's no five, okay. And the weight k of n is given in terms of uh, uh, of n as six minus n upon n. Okay. And so, for instance, for n equal to six, you can see the weight is zero. Okay. So these are modular forms of uh, something called the param paramodular group at paramodular level n. So this is a real mouthful, which is denoted by gamma n, where gamma this exists for any n, uh, any positive integer. Okay. So it's a set of SP 4Q matrices, that is four by, uh, uh, four, by four uh, matrices with whose values are 
in um, uh, synthetic matrices, taking values in, uh, in the rationals, okay? But with this kind of structure, star means arbitrary integers. And uh, so there's only one term which is actually fractional, okay? Which is uh, n inverse coming in here, which I've shown here. So it's a non-trivial statement that this kind of things under multiplication forms a group, okay? And when n equal to one, this is just the standard SP4 set, which is the symplectic group. Okay. And uh, for all these guys, uh, there is a, something called the Fourier Jacobi expansion, which says that, so Z here is, uh, I've not explained, ah, it's here. Z is a two by two matrix. So it has tau, diagonals are tau and tau prime and the off diagonal symmetric, so it's Z. Okay, so, so what we can do is we can expand it, take tau prime, and Q is e power 2 pi i tau, R is e power 2 pi i z, and S is e power 2 pi i tau prime. So if you take tau prime to i infinity, you can see that S tends to zero. Okay, so if you, if in that limit, if you expand it, you, what you find is that you get a series with powers of S, such, and the coefficients in front of this are, uh, are uh, Jacobi forms. Again, you need not know what a Jacobi form is, but from your viewpoint, it should be, it's a, it's a function of two variables tau and z. Okay, so you get an infinite series, uh, okay, of a, of a particular, this is called the index of the Jacobi form, which is completely determined given n. Okay, so the proposition which one is working with, that the phi Siegel modular forms are the denominator formulae for suitable extensions of the Cox moduli algebra G A N, I have not told you what A N is. I'll show you that in a moment. Constructed from rank three Cartan matrices A N. Okay, so this is the proposition, and let me just explain a few things. So let W be the while group generated by the real simple groups with Cartan matrix A N. So then, for all elementary while reflections S I, it changes sign. Okay, this is a property of every denominator formula under wild reflection, elementary wild reflections, it flips sign. Okay, so what this means is that under the wild group, this transforms nicely and covariant okay. for all n equal to one, two, three, and six. Okay. That's a very important property. And for n equal to one, two, three, and four, these are indeed what are called the wild cuts borchardt denominator formula for known BKM Lee super algebra. There's some super symmetry, don't worry. That appear in the work of Gritsenko and Nikolu. Okay, so in other words, these are Borchardt extensions of uh, G of A n. There should be a zero here, which is G of A n. Okay, so these are known extensions. And uh, but uh, for n equal to six, uh, there is a no-go theorem due to Gritsenko and Nikolu, which implies that such a Lie algebra, even if it exists, cannot be the Borchardt extension of G of A six. Okay, so that is a definite no-go theorem. But it doesn't say that. There, can, there might be extra, there might be something new, which, uh, which, uh, which will be a Lie algebra, but won't, uh, will be beyond Borchers. So we have to do something beyond Borchers. And the idea here is that we would like to figure out what is that extension. Maybe there is no Lie algebra, even that is acceptable, okay? And so the aim is really to understand the open case of n equal to six and obtain the Lie algebra, if any, associated with a Cartan matrix A6. So at this point, uh, you can even ask me the question, why are you wasting your time on one example? Okay. And the answer to this is, uh, there are a couple of uh, reasons to do this. The first thing is that, uh, the, that as I explained, uh, all these examples of even borchardt kasmir algebras are special. There are, they appear only in special cases. And uh, so, uh, the, the, the case of A6 is interesting. There is a root lattice. So there are many things which you have in a, in a associated with Lie algebra, they exist independent of whether there's a Lie algebra or not. So these are special root lattices where, with while vector of what is called hyperbolic type. And there's a full classification of these due to Gritsenko and Nikulin, and mostly work due to Nikulin first, and then they've classified it. So they have, they have found around 60 or 70 of them, okay? And so if we understand, uh, and this fits into their classification, and uh, so if we can understand this single case, we would have, uh, we would, uh, we would be providing Lie algebras not for just this example, but for many other examples. That is one, uh, that is the second reason. 
And the third reason is you'll see there are a few more examples of this. It's not only one of them, but there is a sense in which this, these five are the simplest, okay? And uh, let me explain a little bit more through some pictures, okay? So let me tell you how we came across these guys. And uh, so these, uh, so let, uh, you know, phi denote the Siegel model form. That is the, the generating function of quarter BPS states in some CHL models, okay? And uh, then, uh, so the, these were constructed by Dijkhoff, Berlinde, Berlinde first for one example, then Chatkar and Sen. And a few more examples were added to it by me and uh, my student Krishna around 2008. And uh, we also were interested in uh, a connection which uh, was originally ob observed in this by these three authors in 1995. That if you took the square root of their example, it was a denominator formula of uh, some uh, of some Borchardt's Casimir algebra. Yeah. At that point, actually, none of us knew what a BKM Lee supra algebra was, nor did we know what a WKB denominator formula was. Okay. So, but for n equal to one, two, and three, and four, the square root is indeed while cast Borchardt denominator formula for a family of Borchardt's became B super algebras. And this is work of Fritz and Kronikul in Dijkhoff, Linde, Verlinde, Cheng, De Bolker, and me and my student at that time. And they're all Borchardt extensions of Cox Moody Lee algebras, G of A n of some Cartan matrices. And it is not known whether there is a Lee algebra associated with the square roots for n equal to five and six. So these are in something called CHL or before. But what uh, one can do is you can do what is called twining by symmetries that commute with the order folding. One obtains a large set of examples. And so I wrote out a periodic uh, table of uh, Lie algebras uh, around 2012, which we updated fairly recently with my students, uh, Sutapa. And uh, so what we find is, so there, is a, uh, there are two integers, n and m. And uh, so m can go one, two, three, four, five, six, n also. I mean, there can be, there are more, but I'll just focus on these guys. The original ones only had up to four. And so what we find is if we go horizontally, uh, all of them are inequivalent Borchardt extensions of, uh, of uh, this uh, Lie algebra associated with the Kaspari Lie algebra, G of A1, okay? So here Suresh, is the, yeah. uh, can I ask something? Yeah, you can uh, ask. At, at, at some point, will you tell us uh, what's the Borchardt's extension? Of, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so okay. yeah, yeah. Thanks. So this, I like I said, is like uh, you're going on a plane and you're seeing surveying the territory. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. You're not supposed. You're just supposed to get uh, comfortable with the phrases, and then after some time, you'll believe that you understand. <laughs> so sorry. Okay. So. So the point here is there are for A1, you can see there are so many examples. For A2, there are, just in this set itself, there are four examples. A3 and A4, again, there are three examples, okay? You come to A5, there is one example, but for A6, there are two examples. So actually for these cases, we do we, we have some Siegel, so given some symbols for this, this is for, taken from our paper. So we just gave them. So the subscript here one means it's uh, it's the weight of that guy, and so we have three examples where uh, which has a, definitely has a subalgebra which is the Kasmudi algebra for this Cartan matrix and uh, this Cartan matrix. Okay. So so next comes what are these Cartan matrices? And uh, these Cartan matrices uh, were actually implicitly obtained by Ashok Sen. Who are studying what are called walls of marginal stability. So BPS states can decay when you cross a wall, or they can form, or they can combine. Okay, so he worked out the walls, and that's a one-to-one -one correspondence between walls of marginal stability and uh, roots of a Lie algebra. This is something which, uh, uh, which goes back to Cheng and Berlinde and uh, and the Volker and uh, additional work by others. Okay, but these were the people who actually made this connection. So if you go back and look at uh, Ashok Sen's work and you can, uh, you can figure out all the roots and uh, you lo and behold, you find you can work out what the Cartan matrices are. Okay, so you get something like this. So you get A1 is a three by three matrix with two minus two minus two. And if you notice, there'll be a you know, cyclic symmetry in all these things. So you look at the next one is just rotate, uh, you know, this by one, uh, they shift by one unit, again shift by two units, you get this. Same, uh, the next one is uh, A2 is uh, four by four. That means it's four real roots, but it is rank three. That means there is a, uh, it, uh, there is a zero eigenvector of this kind. 
and uh, you can see it's very easy to check what uh, what that is okay so again out here what we have is uh, so again you see it's 2 minus 2 minus 6 2 and you sort of do a cyclic permutation you get this thing similarly a3 is a 6 by 6 guy and uh, uh, and it it's also rank three. so that means it has three null vectors but starting from a4 what happens is that you get infinite of them okay so now m and n become infinite okay and in terms of lattices also uh, there are root lattices associated, associated with this. So, what is a root lattice? So, so this is the norm of, uh, so there is a basis with three vectors and you can think of this as the gram or the matrix of norms of that, uh, of those three vectors. And uh, so, and if you construct a lattice with these three vectors as basis vectors, that, uh, so that is called the root lattice, okay? So, that root lattice, so uh, for A1, A2 and A3, uh, is uh, is of uh, what, it, what is called it's called elliptic type. This is, is called parabolic type. Okay, and uh, the problem here is now is that it is infinite, but you can show that uh, it's still rank three. Okay, so uh, roughly you can construct infinity minus uh, three null vectors. And uh, okay, so for a five and a six also we have Cartan matrices, but there's a nice unified way of writing it. You can write for all of them. And uh, in this fashion, and uh, so for a five and a six also it's infinite, okay. And uh, so you get a formula like this, where lambda here is just the so solution of this uh, quadratic equation. It doesn't matter really. lambda. Uh, I mean, any solution can be put because lambda and one by lambda are the two roots because the product of them is one. Okay, so any one of them, and you can see the. Uh, formula is uh, invariant under lambda goes to one by lambda. Okay. So we actually have, so these are the Cartan matrices. And of course, you can go ahead and define the, uh, we'll show how to define the Cartes uh, uh, KM algebra associated with any Cartan matrix. Okay. So, uh, Suresh, can I ask yeah. you, these groups have directly no physical interpretations, right? These three algebras uh, are simply, a, no. or uh, simply, no. uh, the root has to do with this uh, characterizes the ZPS uh, vectors. That's yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, well, the fact that they live in hyperbolic space, we know I think that we, we say for uh, it will be some moduli space in, in the, at least in the CHL case, it is a moduli. Okay, but actually okay. for the cases of uh, all cases of umbrella moonshine, we don't necessarily have a string theory interpretation, especially for six. So this is all I, so, I, so I'm just sort of putting some placeholders here, mm -hmm. just telling you. you what these objects are, okay? So since there was umbrella moonshine in this uh, title, so umbrella moonshine is a generalization of Mathieu moonshine and it relates finite simple groups or more generally finite groups to class functions that are Jacobi forms, mock modular forms, et cetera. And there are 24 examples associated with what are called the Niemeyer lattices. So it's like you have these so, so called self dual uh, lattices in 24 dimensions in yeah uh, in Euclidean uh, in 24 dimensions and there are 24 of them and exactly 24 of them and uh, these uh, these are called the Niemeyer lattices and uh, Mathieu Moonshine is associated with uh, you know, 24 copies of the A1 root lattice. So for the examples associated with the lattices constructed from root lattices from the A series, okay, we uh, one uh, at least there it is very clear one associates a Jacobi form of weight zero, that is the analog of the elliptic genus of K three. So for Mathieu Moonshine, that appeared in the context of the elliptic genus of K three, and that will be our first example. Okay. And uh, so what uh, what one can show is that using this Jacobi form as a seed. One obtains a Siegel modular form phi using a multiplicative lift due to Clary and Gritsenko. Okay, which again I'm not giving, going to give you the formula, but all I want to tell you is this phi will have a product formula. Okay, it will be a product of a whole bunch of terms. And the phi modular forms that we are considering are the only ones for which the square root you know, in the leads to of the Siegel modular forms uh, leads to Siegel modular forms with integral coefficients. So the square root. We have a condition that it should make sense and uh, and it should give things with integer coefficients and that works. 
Okay, so the clearly get Senko formula, again, you just have to remember, uh, pro provides a product formula for all the five model forms. So we started off with five objects and we have a product formula for them. This is just all that we have to remember. Okay, a little bit uh, more meat. Umbrella Moonshine, we are looking at the A series. Again, I'm doing it for simplicity. So some of uh, the- Sorry, objects, Suresh, yeah. I, I, I just have uh, some basic yeah. question. Uh, yeah. So uh, this, uh, all of these modular forms, uh, all of these six, uh, five modular six, five modular forms are some elliptic genus of some physical models or no, no, they are not. Okay, well, there yeah. could be few, they, there they, could I be mean, some... in principle. Uh, I mean, uh, they are actually they are not. They are not. Not that I know. Okay. No, I don't know that. See, the, in, if if they were. There would be some, it would be some hyperkähler manifold of uh, dimension 2n or whatever. Okay. So that's all I can say. So they're not so simple. Okay. 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 So uh, for me, actually, uh, the whole Umbral Moonshine story is Baroque, but that is, there was a motivation which I'll explain. Uh, this is a typo here, this shouldn't be there. So these are parameterized by a positive integer L called lambda C. And for all our examples, which we are looking at, L is nothing but N plus one, okay? So, and the A series has these guys, two, three, four, five, seven, and 12. So N values will be one, two, three, four, and six, and 12, okay? 12 doesn't work because uh, we don't get into the computers, okay? We don't. So we only have five of them and the square root didn't work. And there are groups which generalize M24, some 2.M12, these are all some groups, okay? Four means I think V4, okay? Cyclic group with four elements, cyclic group with 12 groups. And these are the lattices, okay? And uh, what, uh, to each of these cases, there's a Jacobi form of weight zero and index L minus, okay? So when N is, uh, so if you can see it is, uh, there's nothing but index N. And so these are, the, so I just mentioned here, that uh, that uh, that is a clearly gets in lift that takes as input this Jacobi form, which we wrote here as psi zero n, and from that it constructs for you a Siegel model. Okay. So just a quick reminder of how uh, uh, some objects. So what you do is so these uh, objects uh, can be expanded in terms of characters of some algebra, and you look at the coefficients. Coefficients will be Q series. So like in this example, C1 and B1 are characters of N equal to four SCA at level one. And uh, so if you look at the sigma of tau, it doesn't transform like a modular form, but it transforms like a mock modular form. That means you can add some correction to it, which will uh, call using something called the shadow, which will give you something which transforms nicely into modular forms. Okay? So, but sigma by itself is not a nice modular form. So it's called a mock modular form. Goes back to the work of Ramanujan on a theta series, where he had written some mysterious theta series, which was, uh, which we understood only fairly recently through a thesis of uh, Zweigers. And in all other cases, so here we got only one sigma, but in all the other cases, you will require, you will get, uh, you, you know, you will get uh, N number of sigma. So, so there we will have 10 vector valued mock modular forms. Nothing, it's just that you put, put them all in a N dimensional vector. So some more details. If you looked at the expansion of sigma of tau, oh sorry, if I remove this, uh, what you see is you are, you see the dimensions of uh, irreducible representation of n twenty four. So if you go back here, oh wow, arrows are not working so well. So I don't know how to. Yeah, sorry. So, ah, okay, so where was I? So you, all I wanted to say here was that uh, if you go back here, you have some groups, okay? So uh, what happens is that the uh, character, uh, I mean, repre irreducible representations of those groups, the dimensions start appearing as the coefficients. And uh, the original one, which is called Matthew Moonshine, is due to Eguchi Odin Tachikawa. And uh, they, they conjectured that all terms have this, uh, have this expansion, and they are uh, they are the dimensions of some 
mostly reducible representations of it. And this was proved by Gannon. A similar conjecture was made for all the 24 examples of Umbrell Moonshine by Cheng, Duncan, and Harvey. And it was proven by Duncan, Griffin, and Omer eventually. Okay, so none of these proofs are constructive in the sense that they do not construct some big uh, vector space or module on which you do some weighted trace. Uh, which leads to the mock model is only a proof of existence. And so this is actually an open problem. Can we construct a natural module on which, uh, uh, which is of these groups, uh, which uh, if you did the weighted trace gives you, uh, gives you sigma or equivalently, we could ask, can you find another thing which will give you the Jacobi form? Both are equivalent. Suresh, uh, yeah. so when you say that 24 examples of umbrella motion, what are these 24 examples to correspond to? Each one of them is associated with the Niemeyer lattice. Actually, the umbrella moonshine story is very, very big. So many connections and my head spins, okay? So uh, the original paper was 120 where they got only the A series and then they went and found out that there was more. So the motivation there was to understand. Uh, so there are a number of mock model forms also is finite. So they wanted to understand uh, where, I mean, the, the, the if there was some analog of Mathieu Moonshine for the all the mock modular forms. And so they found the first, they found the A series, and then they found what are called the D series and the mixed series. And so they found that there's a nice correspondence between given any Meyer lattice, they can find, give you a group, they give you all these various things. Okay. Just one more question. Again, I don't know all of this. So. Uh, can you independently construct uh, mock modular forms that are not connected to any of these lattices? Ah, or so so the thing be... is that, uh, I mean, the Zagier, uh, I think mostly Zagier, they, he worked out what are all the possible mock modular forms. And all think... of them are connected to... Yeah, to... all of them fit into this. Fit into this. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there are uh, anything outside this. But I do. I'm not. But for, for the for the modular forms, this connection is rather a uh, strange thing, and not all modular forms will be connected. Like yeah, that's like right. usual yeah, that's right. lattice yeah. or something. That's that are very special modular forms. Yeah. But somehow all mock modular forms have this special property. All known mock modular forms have this. Yeah. Special all connection. Of yeah. So they were trying to fit. Uh, they were doing reverse engineering, and they came across mm -hmm. beautiful. Things. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, I mean, but those papers are so huge. First one is 120 pages. Second one is 180 pages. Suresh, uh, sorry, could I ask? Uh, yeah, you can ask anything. Yeah, in the last slide, the last point uh, you have, does hmm. it mean that there is no statistical mechanics? Uh, there's no critical statistical model for which these are partition functions? That yeah. when you say that these are not weighted traces? Yeah, I, I mean, so what... Uh, what one wants is the analog of what happened for monstrous moonshine or something. There you found you take some particular Z2 or the fold of, uh, you know, the, the chiral part of the bosonic or the, take a bosonic string, compactify it on the beach lattice and do some Z2 or the fold. You get some natural module. And but you I mean, the trace of the J function. So no, I'm not asking if there's a string theory connection, just mm -hmm. the fact that this is this. Is it the statement that they are not traces, uh, weighted traces? No, no, or no. It's just that it's no, no. not known. You, you, what you want, I mean, what this says is there exists a mythical module, okay? We, who's on which if you do the traces, you will get this object. That's all. Okay. But it's not known what that is. Yeah, we don't know how to, I mean, they, it doesn't appear naturally anywhere. I mean. I see. And in the case of, I mean, it's not known for any of the mock modular even, forms. Even, I'm just yeah, asking. Yeah. yeah. Even for, in general, even, even for, even for Mathieu Munchen, it's not. I see. In general, there is uh, no known statistical model for which the partition function can get, uh, give you a mock modular form. Is that correct? Uh, no, no, that is not correct. That's not correct. I see. So, so is there some get, example? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you can get, uh, I mean, not these careers, not these particular ones. Yeah, I mean, you look at these uh, non-compact SL2 models and well. look at the work of, uh, you know, uh, Jan Troost and uh, this guy. Uh, Sujay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. for instance. They, so basically, if you have non-compact uh, situations there, uh, usually if you take uh, compact uh, Kähler manifolds and you work out the elliptic genus on those guys, they, those will be regular Jacobi forms, okay? 
then uh, but if you go ahead and uh, instead uh, look at non compact situations there because of the non compactness you'll have to do some regulating etc and so that's actually a very cute nice i think sujay and uh, nian too they have a very nice example where they show this okay. so i mean uh, so if you're asking for the mock modeler forms coming yes okay so thanks that's uh, another another question this when you say that these are vector valued uh, do you mean that under uh under which uh, transformation are these vectors is it oh, the usual so, so, sl2 so, so, I, I, yeah sl2 okay thanks okay so okay so we'll start with a practical introduction to bkmp algebras so so we'll start with the generators of a lie algebra and we know we can break it up into the cartan and the positive and the negative ones this is the standard decomposition so okay and uh, and from uh, let's focus on r plus and positive roots and there there will be a set of simple roots where uh, all the others can be obtained by linear combinations of these guys and they provide a basis for r plus and the lie algebra in the chevalier basis so uh, what by chevalier basis i'm choosing the cartan also to be labeled by these alphas okay so usually people write as h i j but i want to even here e i but i want to remind you i will keep going back and forth between e alpha and alpha okay so there's a dual relation so this h is commute this is just a cartan this h alpha e alpha j gives you the cartan matrix okay that's the inner product of alpha so it's a j i no okay it's symmetric in our cases e alpha and e alpha e minus alpha i gives you h alpha i this is just an s u2 or s l2 sub algebra and a is the cartan matrix and then the elements of r plus are generated so you can take multiple commutators but then you take the adjoint action which is 1 minus a i j times it will give you zero so this is a relation these are called the sir relations so the uh, so if you give me any cartan matrix a then you go ahead and do this thing and impose this uh, relation so you get a lie algebra okay that lie algebra is what i call g of a okay. sorry sorry uh, what uh, what is this aij times means uh... yeah so there's a cartan matrix so it's just the it says that uh, so these are integers they have to these be are integers. Integers. aijs are integers and negative by nine not equal to yes 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 so there are all these properties some of them okay mm -hmm. but it's fairly loose i mean very relaxed we allow zeros we can allow lots of things okay it okay. need not even be symmetric but it can be symmetrizable but for simplicity we will take it as symmetric okay so mm -hmm. this is the thing. so i'll give i will just see how that works for s u3 okay so cartan matrices they are typically symmetric they have twos on the diagonals negative and zero entries for the off diagonal terms such that a j equal to zero in place a j i equal to zero Okay, and usually the Cartan matrix is obtained at the inner product of the alphas in this fashion. And you might not, you might usually see it as just alpha i, alpha j, because most of the roots are taken to have the two norms. So alpha i, alpha j, alpha j will be two, so it will cancel out. Okay, so that will be the standard formula. But to every simple root alpha or e alpha i, we can associate a while reflection. Okay, and this is just the standard reflection operation with inner product, the standard inner product. killing form okay so the key point remember is s of alpha i takes is is uh, si is generated is the while reflection generated by alpha i so si acting on itself alpha i will flip the sign okay and what is the while group of the lie algebra you just take is just i am just defining it to be the group generated by all while reflection so it's a fox setter group with these generators so s1 square is 1 uh, s2 square so if if there are r of them this is it If there are infinite of them, it will be an infinite dimension. So now we will come to the Weierstrass denominator formula, and this is where this one begins. So in all these cases, there's something called the Weil vector, and uh, so in you might be used to the Weil vector being defined to be half of the sum of the Uh, real roots or something like that, real positive roots. But uh, the, there's a slightly weaker property which works out to a uh, uh, different way of stating it. You just uh, look for a vector where alpha i rho alpha i is minus half alpha i alpha i the norm of alpha i for all simple roots. 
again this minus sign is my convention it has to do with uh, not, not mine actually it's synchronical it's their fault so 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 standard thing will be with the class so so for all simple roots so we just call this the that's a, that's a while vector and so if you work out what si of rho minus rho for using this property it just gives you back alpha okay so more generally for any w belonging to w one sees that si of rho minus rho is belongs to a positive group you can prove this if you had followed the standard convention where rho which was a plus one it would be in r minus so again that's just a convention so i'm just taking to my convention that's all so the wildcats denominator formula is is given by the following thing it says that the uh, left hand side is a sum right hand side is a product okay but let's look at the product first it's over all it knows all about the positive real group so it's a product of the all of them and you can have the uh, same root can apply appear with many multiplicities again that may not have that may not happen in the simple examples that we have seen but it can happen in general so there can be a multiplicity okay and uh, the, the the sum side is uh, just a sum over all while reflections of e power minus alpha okay so you can see that since the while group is generated by all the simple real roots so the left hand side knows about the simple roots right hand side knows about all the all the roots okay so so but the hard part for simple examples like if you take su3 or something multiplicity is always one when you know, whatever it exists it exists with one comes with one but in more general cases it's actually a very very hard problem to determine the multiplicity the product set so this case, alpha by alpha you need the norm of this alpha i uh, no no alpha is just a root i i keep going I back and forth so there's some duality if you will alpha is a uh, covariant and be okay correct. okay uh, sorry i was stupid i can't understand what you mean by uh, so coming well, let's go back here let's go back here okay so so i'm labeling so the the simple roots ah, will have some where okay. it will have some root vector or something right so that is this mm -hmm. what we call alpha so i'll keep i mean i'm just using them interchangeably ah, okay okay they are dual in some sense okay thanks 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 okay, okay. yeah yeah i'm being loose here because okay so okay so so this is what you get and but then uh, there was a beautiful idea due to macdonald that he realized for affine capsule algebras where now you have infinite uh, such guys the answer is known by connecting the denominator formula this product formula to jacobi forms so what he did is is he solved this problem of multiplicity by connecting it up with jacobi forms so let's see how that goes for a very simple example for we'll do some examples now so if you take su3 it has two roots alpha 1 and alpha 2 and their inner product this is a cartesian in alpha 1 alpha 1 is 2 alpha 1 and alpha 2 is minus 1 so you remember the dinkin diagram is two dots connected by a line so this this is just that one is just that and the set of positive roots is nothing but alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 1 plus alpha 2 So the root associated with alpha one plus alpha two will be the commutator of e alpha one with e alpha two. Okay, but in terms of the weight vector, it will just add up. Okay, so this is what I mean. Uh, I have written it here. E alpha one plus alpha two. We usually call it alpha two. Okay. And such relations imply that there are no more positive roots because this is minus one. So if you do square, if you take second time, you take another commutator. So if you did e alpha one with e alpha one alpha two, it is zero. That's the such relation. and the while group is just s3 so first thing is the product side you just it says e power minus rho you sum over all positive roots so this is what is a product side okay. and the sum side if you just expand it so it looks like uh, how many terms are there here if you have 2 2 2 2 cube is eight terms but here we have only six terms so there must be some cancellation and you will see that happen okay so the sum side works out so this is a very trivial identity and nothing you just expand it and you should see two terms cancel and every term is associated by some by, by all these terms six terms will come below and you will do this okay so it's very simple now comes a slightly harder case sl2 hat which again has two roots but now the cartan matrix is uh, 
2 minus 2 minus 2 and 2. And this is uh, now if you look at its determinant, it is 0. So delta, which is alpha 1 plus alpha 2, or the vector 1, 1 has 0 now. Okay. And it's a set of positive roots, now includes imaginary roots. So what is an imaginary root? Uh, so there are some conventions in uh, Lie algebras. When you say norm, we actually mean norm square. Okay, number one. And imaginary means uh, norm square being zero or negative. Even zero, okay, is considered an imaginary root. Okay. So what you find is that uh, R plus now has infinite of them. These two you would have guessed, but there's actually it has infinite uh, number of uh, imaginary roots, m times delta. So if you put that in the product side is uh, as infinite terms, but you get something like this. And then you can make some trivial identifications. You can do it better than that. Identify e power minus alpha one with qr, e power minus alpha two with r inverse, e power minus delta with q. You put that in, what you find uh, is that the product side is this, okay, with some powers of s q. Uh, okay, I also add an s power half. Okay, because uh, so what you do is here theta one is known. Uh, this is a Jacobi form, well known Jacobi form of index half. So you just put s. Uh, so you keep track of index by putting s power half. So again, very natural from the viewpoint of Lie algebra. But what about the sum side? And sum side is actually a famous formula, and uh, so so you get this beautiful identity where this product equal to this thing. But now this is a very non-trivial. Okay, so this is a non trivial identity involving Jacobi forms. And use of Jacobi forms, again, as I mentioned, was pioneered by McDonald to observe the need to modify the product side of the denominator form. So all he did was to say that, look, the product formula says that you have to add these things. And he went and did this, and equivalently on the, he modified R plus, saying it should include this. Okay. So that was McDonald's contribution. More generally, characters of affine Lie algebras are written using Jacobi forms. So it's not just denominator, but all. So far, uh, okay, so, so far we looked at Cox Moody Lie algebras. Borchardt's actually extended considerations by looking for imaginary simple roots. So, what does he mean? Imaginary roots have norm or rather norm square less than or equal to zero. And these are simple, okay. In the affine case, we saw delta, which was imaginary root, but it was not simple because it was the sum of alpha one and alpha two. So it is not simple. It can be expressed in terms of that. Okay. Now the diagonal elements in the Cartan matrix, if you put the simple roots, can have non-positive entries. So you're relaxing the condition on that. Okay. And uh, the denominator formula now gets modified, leading to what is called the Wildcats denominator. So the product side. Uh, so what Borchers did was. He didn't change the mob, uh, change, did not change the uh, right hand product side, but he changed the sum side. Okay, so and the sum side, so the while group is still defined to be the while group of the simple real roots, real simple roots, not uh, imaginary guys. But the imaginary guys have some contribution, and he wrote out something which included the R plus and alpha belongs to the imaginary simple roots. He wrote something which, uh, which is like a modification. Okay, so he modified the thing. And then, uh, but that's not the end of the story. He keeps putting a simple root such that this formula now becomes something which, uh, which, uh, which is equal, which, which is the expansion of some, uh, of some suitable modular form. Okay, so again, this is exactly like what McDonald did. McDonald modified the right-hand side, but he's modifying the left-hand side, the, the sum side. And so he gets this delta. And what delta and uh, and uh, so what he also did was he for many modular forms he showed how to get uh, product formulae so much so that these product formulae like the right hand side of these modular forms delta are called uh, are uh, they are called Borchardt's product formula okay and so this actually gives explicit determination of the root multiplicity. So let's do a very very simple example of. Uh, BKMD algebra. And the simple one is the following. We take SL2 hat, we, we just saw it had two roots, alpha one and alpha two. And it had one, uh, it had an imaginary root, which was uh, delta, which was not simple because it's alpha one plus alpha two. 
So let's go ahead and add additional roots. So we are changing the thing so such that we have M bosonic simple roots of weight delta, uh, two delta, three delta, and so on and so forth. Okay, M of each. And the relevant Jacobi form now is not theta one of uh, this thing, but multiplied by eta tau of M. So this is the analog of delta for the sake of the BKM. And if you go ahead and see, what you get is the following, is that uh, the product side, of course, we know eta has a nice product formula. So you can see that uh, what was one becomes M plus one. And the powers of Q also work out and all these things work out. Okay. Suresh, this one simple question. So mm -hmm. what's the BKM Lie algebra? Borchardt's uh, cuts modi. So it's Borchardt's yeah, modification. Yeah, no, no, Katsmody. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what is this Borchardt's modification involved? Adding imaginary simple roots. Ah, okay, sorry, you said. <laughs> okay, sorry. And that leads uh, to a right, modification thanks. on the sum side. That's all you need to remember. Okay. And that's related okay. to some yeah. modular form. More, some modular object, something which. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the. So I'm giving you a delta. I'm giving you a delta. I'm telling you what are the imaginary simple roots. Okay, we get a product side. But then there is a. Uh, I have to tell you what is the Broad's correction factor T. Okay, and that again I can tell you what it is, and that is just you take. It's just a very simple thing. It's determined completely by. Okay, so you so this is the I think in some sense the simplest example of a BK B super early algebra, which we write as B S L hat affine S L2 with M of this kind of it's an infinite series, but that's okay. okay so this fits into Borchert's uh, story. So Suresh, is there just to just to curious, is there some known uh, physical example that this appears, this mod this uh, modular form, this mock modular form? This is oh, nothing mock here. There's nothing mock. This, sorry, this is Jack, Jacobi form. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it appears. It it'll appear in the next. <laughs> it appears with all the deltas. Okay. I had a reason for <laughs> introducing it, but it's also something. Okay, so the idea is to embed. Uh, so now we want to understand uh, what is the, the the big Lie algebra. So coming back to this statement. So what we have. What we have is uh, what we know, okay, for all the five examples is we know there is a delta. We know a product side, okay. We also know what the value group is, okay. So this much we know, okay, for all five examples. What we don't know is what is the analog of T for all of them. And uh, the, uh, even though I've written it in this way, there's a particular pattern to this. And so I, I don't want to explain that, but okay. So, so our idea was that, uh, so we have this AN, and if you look at the uh, Cartan matrices, uh, I, you will see that there's always a two minus two minus two minus two. The Cartan matrix of SL2 hat is sitting inside those guys. And so our idea was, Let's look at this subalgebra and ask, can we decompose it and then use that as a crutch to, to figure out, uh, at least break up uh, you know, the delta into, into pieces which we can handle. Okay. So let me just start with some SL2 hat or SU2 hat Lie algebra. It just has three generators, so you like J plus J minus an H, so EF, EF gives you H, HE is two, HF is minus two. So this is the maths notation, no I, nothing. And the normalized killing form is EF, which is one and HH is two. So this has three generators. And the affine Lie algebra, SL2 hat is a generator, SL2 hat is like a tensor functions, uh, Lorentz series in, uh, with coefficients in Lorentz series in T, plus some central extension forms, K hat and D. And uh, K, so K hat is a central extension that's like, and D is like the L0. If you, if you want. So L0. So the Lie algebra is like this X tensor. So it's X tensor Tn with Y tensor Tn is XY tensor Tn plus N. So it just adds up and you have a central term. And D with uh, this thing just measures up to a minus sign. Again, this is convention. Uh, it's here also. Uh, so <clears throat> it could be plus N also. So it just measures the power of T. And the Cartan subalgebra is three dimensional. It's H tensor one, K hat, and D. With the inner products at that H tensor one, H tensor one is two, which is just H H is two, and K D is minus one. Okay, so this is just uh, 
this thing. So, so the idea is that the AN, if you go and look at all of them, they all fit into this pattern. So that's it. I've just written a three by three block. You can even write the next few terms if you want. But you can see here that that's a two minus two minus two. So that's a calculus. So we pick two of them and uh, we want to embed. So we want to embed this SL2 hat into this. So this was an idea which goes back to Feingold and Frankel, but they were studying some other uh, particular uh, uh, specific uh, Kasmodi algebra. And uh, so they did this, embed, they were in, but we are looking at the denominator. Okay? So there is some sense it's similar. So what we have is E1. So what we do is we take a three by three block and let's call them E1, E2, E3, the roots. And so we want to relate them to EF and so on and so forth. So, you, so we take E2 to be E tensor F1, F2 to be F tensor 1. Again, you can ask, why did I do that? And that's just to match some of the notation. E1 goes with F tensor T, F1 goes with E tensor T inverse. Okay, so there's a, notice there is some flipping here. So there's some twisting going on. It's not like it is E, 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 e1 is, uh, is E tensor T, it's F tensor T. And then you can work out some details and you just need to know what is H1, H2, H3, which is the rank three Cartan disguise. And so we, you can easily work out what we have. Okay, so, we, so we get this mapping is done. So the first uh, point here is we identify, the, we look at these uh, Seeger, five Seagull model forms and they all have this expansion. Okay, so, so it is uh, S power half, phi K N half, times one plus s power n psi zero n. So you get a Jacobi plus order s power two n. So now I have to explain all these terms. First, let us look at this psi zero n. Remember I told you that there were Jacobi forms which arose in the context of moonshine or in the context of, of umbrella moonshine and, and that's exactly this, okay? So this is the Jacobi form. What is this guy? Okay, this guy is actually theta one with some power of eta. Okay, so now we have seen this. So this looks like, this object looks like the denominator formula of a Borchardt extension of SL2 hat. Okay, so, so if you look carefully, actually it comes down to that alpha one, uh, sorry, yeah, E1 and E2, they generated SL2 hat. And uh, so that's, uh, so, and uh, so, and you can prove that uh, this theta one is exactly the denominator identity associated with E1 and E2. And these etas are some imaginary roots which come naturally in this setting, okay? So what we have is not, a, uh, what we have really is that this G of AN rather has, all, all also has some imaginary simple roots. Okay, so there is a Borchardt extension of SL2 hat, which uh, this thing, so we could, so we have two subalgebras of the big algebra. One is an SL2 hat, and the other is this Borchardt extension. Okay, which I explained to you. Okay, so, so what we have is uh, this uh, prefactor is now the WKB denominator formula for this Borchardt extension. So we can decompose psi zero, this thing in terms of characters of, uh, we have a double option, SL2 hat or this Borchardt extension. Okay, so let's do that decomposition. So if you do that decomposition, so I'm doing this in terms of characters, okay? So, and the prefactors will be functions only of tau. All the Z dependence is buried in this. I'm not shown it here, but it's like this. It's also from the top inside. So what you have, and these are tildes are characters of the Borchardt extension. Okay, so you, so you get a vector worth of this thing. So it's F1, F2 up to Fn plus one. So this is the same as this N, so you get an N plus one dimension. And, Okay, so, and it's two expansions produces the multiplicity of various irreducible representations of this Borchardt's expression. But however, from a practical viewpoint, the transformations of these tildes are, you see, so they differ only by, uh, you know, powers of eta, so that it can do the function. So we just uh, work, it's simpler to work with G1 and GI plus one. Again, this is exactly like this. What we have done is taken out some powers of eta and uh, put so this, uh, the map between the F, FIs and the GIs is very straightforward. There's nothing to do. But the reason to do this is because the modular transformations of these guys is textbook. 
So you open the yellow book on CFT or whatever ask what are their modular S matrices and you get S and T matrices you get. So what, what that does is it gives you how G1 and GI plus one, how the GIs mix, okay, because the chi's mix. So GI should mix, but psi zero N is a, is a well-known object. We know how it transforms. So what we get at the end of this thing, this decomposition, is that we get a vector valued modular form whose modular properties are fully known. Okay. But now the question is, how do we know what are, what are these things? So what we did is experimentally, we know these guys. We know the size, we know the chi's. So you can sit in Mathematica and by hand, you can figure out, say the first 10 terms of each of these things. You can go to higher order, so it gets messier, but you can do it to whatever order you need. So, but all you need is to, you know, get some small number of terms, depending on the dimension of the space, and then you're done. So question is, uh, how do we identify these uh, order forms? And uh, so we want a close formulate for this, not something which you have to fit. Okay. Uh, I could I should have deleted this. Okay, there's no top right should be kind of. Okay, so for n equal to one, two, three, and four, we actually showed that the vector valued modular forms are solutions to a modular matrix differential equation conserved by that. Okay, so and then we got we actually showed that uh, that's a differential equation whose solutions are these guys. So uh, so that's a, that requires some data, and that data we could get by just looking at the expansion of these things to fairly low order. That was enough. And so we had some checks of this, like whatever we did. So the differential equation that took us inputs, the modular matrices, that is S and T associated with the group, and with some additional data in the form of an R by R matrix. The output is a basis for VVMS of rank R with a given modular form. So we, we actually got more than what we wanted. We just didn't get R vector value modular form. We got the full basis. But for n equal to six, everything was tough. The dimensions of the unknowns became very, very large and we were unable to solve it. So it's like some, in, uh, you know, you have to pick some unknown coefficients. So we have to solve, we have to solve by something like six into six, 37, seven into seven, 49 minus uh, some four, 28. So 21 dimensional space, we had to figure out things. And uh, I was not able to solve it. it I tried, I mean, it was not for lack of trying, but, uh, this is uh, where uh, Vishwanathian observed, not Vishwanath actually, it was uh, Shabir who observed this, that the psi 0, 6, if you expand it in terms of some theta functions, it takes a very, very simple form, 1 by eta times this. This is not any expansion which I was talking earlier, but this is just something else. Okay, and then Vishwanath observed that, uh, oh, Uh, 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 that this using this and there is some connection with some other uh, form, uh, some other, uh, some other, uh, Eke, something called Hecke modular forms. He was able, we were able to actually, in this case, at least solve, uh, get explicit formulae for all the G's. And that is uh, pretty remarkable. Okay. So, but it was not as a solution of, uh, of any differential equation and that remains open. But now coming back to this expansion, which I started out with. This is the first thing. So you can ask, what about the next term? What about the next to next term? We need to understand it to all orders. And so how does one proceed? Uh, can I take another five to 10 minutes, Ayan? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. So the next term will be of order s power two n, and so that coefficient will be some. We'll just use a symbol psi zero two n. It will be a Jacobi form of index two n. Okay. So what is that? Okay. So this is where we uh, uh, where uh, <clears throat> I generalized ideas which appeared in the context of Mathieu Munshain. You obtain a slightly different formula. Okay. It's uh, so so this we have already seen. But the remainder of the term is an exponential of some Hecke operator. Okay, so which says that you take psi zero n, which is your uh, this guy, and you act on it with this, and all higher order terms come by this. Uh, so in some sense, if you know psi zero n, you know all the rest of the terms. All the other terms are determined completely in terms of psi zero n. 
okay and and this is uh, the formula that we get it's some heck operator and it's some specific thing we uh, details are not important but but this is not quite uh, what uh, botch uh, i mean i told you there was a product formula but then uh, what sets and i showed is uh, even i is that we these guys will uh, is equivalent to a product formula and we proved that this formula is equal to the equivalent to that other formula so these are uh, this as as it is written there's nothing known about modularity of this thing so the only way to prove it's modular is is, is to connect it up to some mathematical construction which is in this case grid and cohen series formula and it agrees okay you can prove that so but uh, this is uh, more interesting because what uh, what it does is it gives you okay so what it does it gives you a product formula with okay like i said but uh, for n equal to 6 actually what happens is that i told you there are infinite roots and those infinite roots are uh, these are walls of marginal stability but there are some blue roots and these also appear and they appear with multiplicity minus one and so <coughs> we interpreted them as formulaic roots and these were anticipated in sense study in the walls of marginal stability he didn't work out all the details but this was worked out by my student gopala krishna long ago okay so now the real issue is is there a sum side okay so for when n is not six actually there is a second construction called the additive list and so you have actually a closed formula, and that's what Gibson Kernicolin used to prove the additive list. Again, for n equal to six, it doesn't work. The formula doesn't work because the weight is zero. Okay, so for for that formula to work, the weight should be greater than zero. It should be half integer, half also will work, half one, etc. Okay, so we need a new approach to organize the sum side. So you just look at order as psi zero to n and ask what this thing is. You get two terms, and this actually has a very nice interpretation. So let V n denote some graded vector space such that the umbrella Jacobi form is obtained as a super case. Of course, V n is clearly an SL two hat module. So now we can what we want to do is to interpret these guys in terms of SL two hat. Okay. So so the, so what it turns out is that there are these terms. You have to reorganize a bit, but they look like they 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 can be obtained as a super trace of two other SL two hat modules. One is just the anti symmetric uh, of V n, and the other one is what we call V n doubled. Okay, the latter module V V n doubled is obtained by some scaling procedure. Remember SL two hat two here is just originally SL two hat one was T and T inverse. So now you formally what you do is you replace T with T square and T. Uh, that's all you do, and you get this thing. In fact, this is isomorphic to to hat okay but uh, it's some scaled uh, version and from the work of dicraft moore berlin and berlin in the context of second quantized elliptic genus of k3 we can obtain actually similarly explicit formulas and what you find is or uh, you get uh, things like this for every young diagram you will find some term like this but then there will be also uh, m scaled uh, models of them Okay, it's interesting to observe that the other real simple roots appear in these scaled modules. We also conjecture that all simple roots appear in scaled modules, but this is a conjecture I haven't, we haven't proven. It. This is my conjecture, my collaborator also don't agree with it. But we have checked and it seems to be okay to the level that we have checked. It. So, so this is uh, something we do not have a sun side. So, but we can, we still have this formula, we can sit down and do stuff. Ask uh, we can do experimental study. We are not mathematicians, so what you find is uh, standard uh, kind of Borchard corrections that we find. Okay, that we find, but for n equal to six, we find additional fermionic roots, and they seem to appear with a term which uh, which is uh, different from the Borchard correction because these are real, but they are fermionic real roots, and they come with some weird thing. Okay. And uh, it appears that this uh, they, they fit this particular formula, okay. but uh, this is again unproven. So this is the first insight that we have into what kind of corrections that we should look for. But of course, this has not been checked to very very high order, so I don't know if this is correct. Okay, so some more checking has to be done. Okay, so I'll conclude now. So there are some positives. One is that the vector value model form provide explicit formulae. 
for uh, for most uh, for uh, you know multiplicities etc for imaginary simple loops this is a new result even though this was known they are known implicitly okay our goal actually is to organize the siegel model forms in terms of orbits of the full while group so at this point what we have done is we have taken a sl2 at subgroup but question is can we rewrite this whole thing as uh, uh, in terms of representations of the kachmudi uh, exchange of g of a n okay that's what we would like to do but the problem for uh, four five and six is that the dimensionality of the generators of the while group is infinite so there we need a nice presentation and we don't have that okay and so we would also like to classify all kinds of correction terms that appear on the sum side for n less than or equal to 4 kritsenko and ekman actually show that they are all fit into the borchert pattern and that's it no more and again like i mentioned we expect for n equal to 6 that there'll be a new kind of correction again on the sum side not on the product side which will help us understand a6 more okay so as of date we have not understood the sum side and we do not have a clear picture whether there is a new kind of lie algebra whose denominator is delta 0 6 thank you thanks suresh for this very nice talk and with nice examples and questions Uh, uh, Suresh, uh, hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the, not really a question. Just to understand, just to summarize in two lines your talk. So you have the Siegel modular form, and you are doing the expansion powers of s. Yeah. And uh, each coefficient that you are getting in powers of s, you want to organize this as uh, a level decomposition of the uh, Borchert some Borchert Kakmudi algebra that you don't know. Yeah. Uh, and these coefficients, you want to uh, uh, like think of them as uh, uh, yeah. So, but this is actually an artifact. It's an artifact of uh, this is artifact artifact of our decomp choosing the SL two in a particular way so that it is compare compatible with the Fourier algebraic decomposition. But once we put in the other roots, it will go through across levels. Okay, so one one small question is, I mean, do you understand how this SL two hat is embedded in the in the Lie algebra that you are trying to find? Yeah, yeah, that's what we worked out. Okay, and there are other SL twos you can look for, like uh, yeah, yeah. So 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 the weird thing is that uh, one thing we know is that uh, this SL two hat is not the n equal to four SL two hat. We try to we try to see if they match. If they, there is some connection, there isn't. No, no, no. What, what I mean is that uh, SL two hat is a relatively small Lie algebra in the very big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. What I'm saying is that there are many other embeddings of SL. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, in fact, uh, Nikolai and uh, Feingold have been. Yeah, exactly. Doing all so, those things. Yeah. yeah. So those, I mean, those embeddings. What about those embeddings? Will they correspond to some other expansion? Have you? Do you have any comments on that? Any thoughts? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I have not thought very deeply. In terms of those guys, no, I have read the, their papers for ideas, and I didn't get any. I mean, that's more my limitations, possibly. <laughs> yeah. So, but this this has been light, slightly fruitful. I mean, in the sense that it has given us a small uh, wedge to enter, and uh, yeah. also connects up with uh, many other things. So. Okay, and one sorry, one more question. Yeah, you can. Just the, I mean, just as a general discussion, because I don't know this subject. Actually, let me turn. Let me turn. Everybody on. is local now, so. Yeah, turn on the video also. Uh, I am still in office. Uh, uh -huh. So there is this. Uh, so you mentioned this while group uh, yeah. towards the end. Yeah. Um, so actually, what I remember is that even for finite exceptional Lie algebras like E eight. Yeah, uh, finding the while group compact form of while group is very difficult. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. You need yeah. a nice presentation. You need you yeah. need to decompose the sum in a way which is compatible with what you know. I have I don't have a clue. Yeah. So my question was, do you have a good presentation of this while group? No, in, in not your... for the not for six. But for for instance, for the first case A one, it is known actually. There's beautiful work of uh, fine gold.
fine gold and frankel it's like in the other of this i don't know fine gold for sure okay okay so reja that's all we will discuss some other time <laughs> okay yeah okay. okay thanks yes sian uh, okay so thanks suresh again yeah, and you're uh, let's see if we... <laughs> uh if then if there are no other questions maybe we should uh, stop the recording yeah thank you